along with the Nevi'im of Baal, of the Lord, the prophets of the Lord, 450, and the Nevi'im of Asherah, 400, notice, verse 19, 1 Kings 18, 19, the ones who eat at Isabel's Shulchan, notice, these prophets of Baal and these servants of Asherah who were submitted to historic Isabel, notice, were not only serving the purposes of Baal, they were getting their food, their social security, their pension, their health benefits, they were getting everything from the very table or the very shulchan of Isabel. Did you notice? We're not talking about Islam now. We're not talking about the end time beast. They, they, we have tapes for that. We have DVDs for that. We have teachings for that. We have online articles for that. I'm taking you to a place, Vincent, that we've never been before as a congregation. I'm giving you new wine, and I'm even putting it into new wineskin, somebody. Thank you. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> <laughs> Yahweh. Verse 21. I'm sorry. Melachim Aleph. 21-23. Melachim Aleph, 21-23. And of Isabel also spoke, so we're, we're, we're acquainting ourselves with the historic Isabel to see exactly the details of the end time Isabel and her characteristics and ultimately her destination. And of Isabel also Yah spoke Yahweh of the daughter of Baal. Yahweh said this, Dogs will eat Isabel by the wall of Yisrael, not Jezreel, Yisrael. And then I want you to turn quickly to Melachim Bet, chapter 9, 2 Kings, chapter what? 9. 2 Kings, chapter 9. Is anyone enjoying? Is anybody enjoying enough to tell me that they're enjoying? Or do you want to keep this to yourself? Fear can even flounder with my hot fin thief. Melachim Bet, chapter 9, and verse 35. And they went to bury her, notice, talk about the death of Isabel. They went to bury her, but they found no more than her head and her feet and the palms of her hands. I'll say that again. When they went to bury Isabel, according to the word of Yahweh, in Melachim Bet, 2 Kings 9.35, it says they went to bury Isabel, but they, found, they didn't find Isabel. What happened to her? She was raptured, right? Wrong. There was nothing left of her except her skull and a few fingers. But even the fingers were detached from her body. Historic Isabel. Verse 36. Therefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of Yahweh, which he, sp he spoke by his Evan Eliyahu, Elijah, Hatishbi, saying, In the portion of Israel, verse 36, will dogs eat the flesh of Isabel? And the carcass of Isabel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Israel so that they shall not even be able to say that this is Isabel. She was so decapitated and she was so butchered in her death that no one could even recognize that that was Isabel or Jezebel. Are we on? To, to see what, who the end time Isabel is, and the fate of the end time Isabel, we have to reacquaint ourselves with the historic Isabel and her ultimate fate. So let us summarize as follows. The historical Isabel had done the following. Number one, had asked the Israelites to give up circumcision and Torah. Do you know any churches that fit that description? You can worship gold here, but don't bring that flesh. I don't want anything to do with that, uh, you know. <laughs> the women are laughing, the men are going. Como esta. 
Number two, financially established and supported, this is the historic Isabel, financially established and supported a false Baal priesthood, of course she was the daughter of Baal, and false prophetic schools, and paid them, paid, turn your neighbor and say, they got paid. They got paid. I said they got paid. They got paid. Try that again. They got paid. they got paid. Baal's prophets and priests got paid to lead in the worship wow. of Baal and Asherah, the historic Isabel. Number three, the historic Isabel killed the true leaders and prophets of Yahweh. Number four, Isabel promoted the worship of Asherah. Number five, Isabel put up an Asherah pole asking its adherents to worship the pole. You ever hear of cross worship? He's still on the cross. I remember when I was being baptized as a Catholic, I had just gotten saved. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know who to speak to. I didn't know who. I was trying to go somewhere for help. And I went to Father Fox. Praise Yahweh. Not to Fox Channel. I found Father Fox drinking beer, walking his dog. And um, he says, look, if you're going to be baptized as a disciple of Zeus, you're going to need a godfather. I said, really? I said, I got Al Pacino. He said, no, I'm talking about a real Catholic godfather. You're going to need a godfather. I said, I will? He said, yeah. So he got a 14-year-old Spanish kid, and he goes, Marshall, I want you to meet your godfather. Jose Luis, I forgot what his name was. First thing he said to me was, there's our Savior. I said, where? My Bible says he's risen from the dead, he's resurrected, he's glorified. I said, where's my Savior? He's right there on the pole. And he hasn't moved. It's been about 2,300 years now. We're ready to call the doctor. <laughs> Lord, we're ready to call the, the, the medics. He has not much move. He's, that's my Savior. I said, that's your, let me get this straight, Britt. That's my Savior on the pole, and you're my godfather. All right, this is a fast Jewish boy. He's got it up here. I'll never forget the day Father Fox, our last counseling session, and I was about to be uh, officially cat cat cataclysmalized as a Catholic. I mean, I mean, can not can um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not canonized. Not canonized. No, I'm not that important. <laughs> Catechismized. Catechismized. He knew I was Jewish. He knew I wasn't into beads and, and smoke and punk. You know, the punk things you used to get when you used to get high. Remember when you were in the world? We, used to, we didn't want our neighbors knowing we were drug addicts, so we used to light up the punks. No, one, no we were dopes lighting up punks. Come on now! That's where Yahweh took me out of. A dope with punks. Anyway, so he, Father Fox went into his black jacket. And all of a sudden, he uh, developed a, a case of, of advanced Parkinson's. And that's a very you know, difficult disease. I never saw the man's hand shake before that. This is our last counseling session. And all of a sudden, he had developed a serious case of, of the shakes, of maybe Parkinson's. And then I knew why he was shaking, because I was still Jewish. And he knew I wouldn't buy a lot of the garbage he was selling. Right? So he goes into his pocket. I mean, he was shaking like a leaf, man. He was shaking. <laughs> And, and then he goes into his pocket. Are you still with me, Mordecai? Okay. This is not entertainment. Listen, this is really, this really happened. So he goes into his pocket, and he goes, now you're going to need this. <laughs> Father Fox, so I got a godfather. He hasn't moved in 2,000 years. And now I, I'm going to need this. He says, yes. Well, what is this? The beads. You know why he was shaking? Because he knew I was Jewish. I wasn't buying that stuff. He goes, but you don't have to have it. You don't need to use it, but it'll help you. So he shoved it right back in his pocket, and he stopped shaking. Honest truth. Put it back in his pocket, and stopped shaking. The Jewish boy had said no. No, thank you. Anyway. Where were we? A pole. Isabel put up an Asherah pole, 
and ask its adherents to worship it. Number six. Historic Isabel caused idolatry in Israel by deceiving people to worship Baal, the Lord, as a way to worship Yahweh. Number seven. Isabel ruled through religious and spiritual intimidation. intimidation. Meaning, if you didn't worship the Lord, what happened to you? You got your head cut off. Would you say that's religious intimidation? I would. She ruled through spiritual and religious intimidation. Number eight. Isabel, historic Isabel, disregarded, disregarded her husband's influence. Very interesting. Number nine. Historic Isabel appeared to be Israelite, but was actually the daughter of the king of Lebanon, or Sidon, the daughter of a foreign power and a foreign king. Let me read that again. She looked like an Israelite queen, but was in fact the daughter of a foreign power and a foreign king. Are you with me? Britt, are you with me? She looked like an Israelite, but she wasn't. And lastly, historic Isabel painted her face green. Now, where's that in the Bible? Well, does the word of Yahweh say that she painted her face as a seductress? But she actually painted her face green. Because remember, she spent all her time worshiping with her nose in the what? Asherim. What, is, what does an Asherim mean? Asherim means the groves. The groves of trees and plants. The pagans worshipped all their idols in the green grove. So she painted symbolically, metaphorically, listen, she painted her face not just with eyeshadow and an excess amount of mascara, darling. She also painted her face green. You with me? I say green in Spanish. Verde. Okay. <coughs> because she spent so much time worshiping false deities, Baal, the Lord, in grove, in altars of groves, the grove altars, Asherim. Now, in time, Isabel in Gilead, our Revelation. We just read that in Revelation chapter two verses 18 through 25. End time Isabel is a what? Is it a he or a she? Huh? Is it a he or a she? It's a she. The organized church system of today is described as a bride. Is she not? Hello? Is she not? She's described as a feminine entity. Is she not? The members of this bride, this organized church system, are the victims of a false priesthood. Are they not? Yes. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. That's a false priesthood. Now, I don't want to offend anybody, but I know I'm going to be a church accused of being harsh, okay, being church bashing. Okay being ridiculing, that, that's not my purpose. My purpose is to show you that that system that we came out of is in the Bible along with the beast. There's a connection between the end time Islamic beast and end time Isabel. There's a connection. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's a connection. That's good. There's a connection. To daughter by Yahweh. I said to daughter by Yahweh. Let's, let's make that nexus. So the metaphor of end time Isabel, the church system of Thyatira, used in Kilianah chapter 2 for end time Isabel, match all the characteristics of historical Isabel. The symbols fit Rome. Notice, listen. All the symbols fit Rome and the unreformed Reformation churches. Make sense? They not only fit Rome, they fit the unreformed Reformation churches. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. I said Baruch Hashem, Yahweh anyway. If you can't say Amen, oh say Oh my. Oh man. Alright. So we've 
encountered the historical Isabel, now I want to take you to the end time church system, rebuked by Yeshua himself in Revelation chapter 2, and the words of Yeshua are chilling. I mean, we could read it again, but it's, it, there's no sense reading it again. The words of Yeshua are chilling. Remember we started this message, Revelation chapter 2? I will put her in a coffin. I will kill her children. And when I'm done putting her in a coffin, and when I'm done killing her children, I will put her into a great tribulation. That's chilling. That's not church bashing. That's Yeshua talking about an end time Isabel, Lloyd. That's not me talking. Amen? That's Yeshua talking. So if you, have, if you think this message is, is in anger or in the flesh, then please consult your local Yeshua director. <laughs> okay, let's look at end time Isabel. There's a woman in the end times, a system called Isabel. Number two. According to Revelation chapter 2, Yeshua calls her a murderer and destroyer of the true Besorah message. Number 3, Yeshua calls her a prophetess, but she has a false message. Number 4, she overrides her husband's commandments. <coughs> <coughs> Who's her husband? Allegedly, Jesus Christ. And yet she overrides. She does not obey his commandments. The spirit of Isabel contradicts her husband, Yeshua, and does her bazaars, her bingos, her Valentine's Day, her Easter, her Christmas. These are all man-made commandments. In order to keep the man-made commandments, you have to set aside the written, true, eternal commandments, and she pays no regards to the commandments of her husband. Number, let me take a break. One, two, three, four. Not a spiritual break, a physical break. One, two, three, four. Number five, she seduces Yahweh's people via false teaching. Is that true of the end time Roman church and the unreformed reformed churches? Are they seducing Yahweh's people by false teaching? Very much so. We don't have time to go into that today. We have plenty of tapes and DVDs for you to, uh, to look at. In, in our free lending library. Number six. She seduces Yahweh's people via spiritual adultery or idolatry, like the worship of saints and the worship of Mary. She causes people to commit number number what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She causes people to commit sexual immorality by forbidding marriage and normal, healthy sex. You see, I'm from the Dr. Ruth Westheimer School of Sex. Really? How many remember, Dr. Ruth? You are there. Hello, Dr. Ruth? Remember Dr. Ruth? Dr. Ruth, I got problems. My wife, she's not attentive. I don't know what's happening. She's not paying attention. She doesn't interest me. I put on clothing. She doesn't want the clothing. I smell. I got to take a shower a hundred times before we go to bed. Hello, you're on there. Dr. Ruth Westheimer. Remember, remember Dr. Ruth? Right? What a job she was. I don't even know if she's still on the air. Anyway, let me explain something to you, brothers and sisters. Yahweh is the author and finisher of good sex. So, Yahweh wants you to have good sex. But the end time Isabel says, no touchy, no feely, no marriage, you gotta be celibate. And Yeshua said, no you don't. You only gotta be celibate if it's given to you to be celibate. The Catholic Church asks whether it's given to you, Yeshua gives you the ability to be celibate, doesn't matter. If you wanna become a priestus Nicolodian, you've gotta be celibate, even if you don't have the, the gift from Yahweh to be celibate. So if I can't have good sex, like Dr. Ruth tells me to have, now, I ain't got to do dirty deeds done dirt cheap, but I got to find me a closet. And then I got to find me a nice boy. Nice boy. Now, he, a nice boy who won't tell the police.
That's what happened when you forbid normal human beings to get married and have normal relations. <laughs> Isabel caught number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's a biggie. She causes them to eat things sacrificed to idols. This metaphor is, the, is no doubt the communion wafer. Sacrificed on a weekly basis, right on schedule, to a Gentile, anti-Torah, non-Hebraic caricature who never lived, named Jesus. Non-Hebraic, never lived, doesn't exist, but every week we offer up a wafer to Jesus. So that the poor people in the Catholic Church and the poor people in the unreformed reformed churches that are not reformed but are in need, in dire need of reformation, are eating things sacrificed to the Lord and not to Yahweh. Those communion wafers are not dedicated to Yahweh. They're dedicated to the Lord. I don't say this, I say this with a broken heart. It's a sad stuff. But this is a judgment that's coming. Someone's got to tell our brothers to get out of that system. Can I hear a good amen? Spurgeon says, if you can't preach about the lost and people going to hell and perishing forever in the lake of fire without tears in your eyes, you don't belong in the pulpit. Number number nine. End time Isabel rules through a religious hierarchy, you know, and a spirit and spiritual intimidation, for sure. Excommunication, removal. Number ten. End time Isabel appears to be Israelite, but is actually the daughter of a foreign power. Did you get that? Anti Isabel, like historic Isabel, appears to be Israelite, but is actually the daughter of a foreign power. And who is that foreign power? Who is that foreign power? Baal, <coughs> the Lord. Are you with me? Who is Isabel? The daughter of the king of Ceylon. She was not an Israelite. She acted like one. She looked like one. But she didn't worship like one. She, did, she, she didn't serve Yahweh like one. And all these other things that we discussed earlier. So the end time church, the bride of Thyatira, actually looks like a Israelite. Because you know why? They have the Torah in their Bible, don't they? They have the prophets in their Bible, don't they? They say hallelujah. In their hymns, don't they? So it looks like the real McCoy, but it's not the real McCohen. You with me? So the end time Isabel, Daryl, matches the historical Isabel almost, almost to a T. Almost to a T. The end time Isabel has kissed the Quran. And told other papists that Allah is another name for God. And another way to worship Yahweh. The end time Isabel has also, oh Yahweh, help us. The end time Isabel has also painted her face verde, green. Because when she kissed the Quran and she told the Catholic Church and the unreformed reformed churches, that Allah is another way to Yahweh, that Allah is another name for God, her face got painted with green. The same paint on the first historic Isabel who put her nose and her mind into the groves of worship. Are we on? I told you you didn't, you didn't hear this before. You didn't hear me share this before. This is new wine put into new wineskins in the body of work that I'm leaving behind for the world. This is new wine put into new wineskins. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh.
It's his words. It's his revelation. And lastly, the end time Isabel established Christ's Mass and Ishtar, both pagan Babylonian sun celebrations of fertility and of birth. Very sad. Because remember, Revelation is a book written to what? The last generation. There is a Isabel that is in the world today, and Yahshua said, I've given her room to repent, and she hasn't repented. The pole is there, the green is there, the paganism is there, the spiritual abuse is there, the forsaking of the natural affection between a man and a woman in marriage is there, it's all there, like it was in the historic Isabel. Are we on? And Yahweh says, oh, warn her, my people. What will be the punishment? Brothers and sisters, listen to me. You're glad you came today. Oh, man, listen to me. That's the only place in the book of Revelation that the apostate church system is mentioned. Everything else referring to the beast, 